All right, so we're going to get started with um, all fours or quadruped position. So you're going to be on your hands and knees on your mat. Your shoulders are over the wrists, hips over your knees, long spine. And you're gonna think about keeping your lower spine long by drawing your belly towards your spine. And then from here, we're just going to draw the pelvis or really the sits bones back behind you like you're trying to draw a pelvis over your heels and then come back to your start position. So you're hinging the legs and the hip joint. So as you bring the sits bones back, you're thinking about hinging from the front of the hips and imagining kind of what's going on between the head of the femur, the thigh bone, and the cup of the pelvis. Does that make sense? Yes. That's okay. As you continue to do this, you'll keep neutral spine, neutral pelvis. And then the next time you come back to neutral, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees, we're going to take the sits bones over just the right heel. So it's that same hinging back, but now instead of going straight back, you're going to the right. And then you'll come back to your start position and go over the left heel. So you're making like a V shape. Okay. And as you're hinging from the hips, you're also hinging from the shoulders as well. Those shoulder blades are wide across the back of the rib cage. And you're thinking about drawing the back of the rib cage slightly up towards the ceiling so that you're not sinking in the rib cage and shoulders. Oh, that was helpful. Oh, good. Okay. I'm glad that's helpful. So we'll do one more time over each heel, going back over the right heel. And if you're on a different heel, that's fine. And then going to the left heel. And then once we come back to our start position, we're gonna think about going over the right heel and making a little circle, we're creating an oval actually here, coming over to the left heel and then coming back towards our start position and making little ovals here going in the same direction, staying long through the spine, belly continues to lift. We often say navel to spine, but you actually wanna think about three inches below the navel or the belly button, drawing towards your sacrum. And once you get back to your start position, switch the direction of your ovals. Continuing to keep length through the spine. And I like to think about breathing into the back of the rib cage to expand the rib cage as well. That is also helpful. Okay, good. Yeah, I find it helpful to continue thinking about what's going on in the shoulders and the rib cage because it's very easy in this position when you have gravity working against you to kind of sink into them and allow the breastbone to fall down towards the mat. We'll do one more circle in this direction. And then we'll come back to our start position. Shoulders over wrists, hips over knees, long spine. And then imagine that you're hips are like a typewriter and you're going to take the typewriter all the way to the right as far as you can and then all the way to the left as far as you can without letting the pelvis rotate and without hiking the hips. So you're staying long through the side body as you bring the pelvis to the right and then back in a straight line to the left. And if you remember using typewriters, Think of your pelvis as being like the base of the typewriter. I know it's the top part. I don't know what it's called. Do you know what it's called, Marie? Carriage. The carriage, thank you. <laughs> I thought you might know. The carriage um, is the part that's moving, but think about the weight that grounds it down. Think about that being in your pelvis. I'm not sure if this is a great analogy, but the idea is that you want to stay kind of heavy in the pelvis so that you're not allowing it to rotate or hike up on one side or the other. About the shoulders are they supposed to stay pretty stationary um, that's a good question shoulders do not stay perfectly stationary they do follow the pelvis a little bit um, so you'll be kind of moving slightly from one side to the other in the upper body but you're trying to keep it as quiet as possible okay and we're focusing on the carriage part of the typewriter not so much the keyboard 
Yes, we are focusing on the carriage part of the typewriter, not so much the keyboard. Thank you. Now, that being said, I think the millennials might not be able to relate to that analogy. I'm, I'm going to have to come up with another analogy that does not use a typewriter. So if you think of anything that moves from side to side like a typewriter, let me know. <laughs> because an abacus isn't going to work either. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to come back to our start position and we'll go into cat cow Pilates style, which means we're going to start from the pelvis. So you're going to think about lengthening through the spine first and on your exhale, co-contract, curling the pelvis towards or pubic bone towards the belly button or tucking the pelvis underneath you and rolling up the spine all the way until the head drops. You're kind of looking towards your belly button and then initiating again from the pelvis, send sits bones back behind you and send breastbone forward in front of you. And then you'll keep moving through cat cow as you're rounding the spine. This is that like scaredy cat um, or Halloween cat look. And as you send the sits bones behind you and the breastbone forward, this is kind of that sunken spine cow look. That's a very flattering image, I'm sure. As we continue moving from the pelvis, allowing the movement to roll all the way up the spine in each direction, I just want to explain the co-contraction. So when I say the co-contract, you're simultaneously lifting the pelvic floor like a kegel, drawing lower abs towards the spine, and it, using the extensor muscles or the multifidi muscles of the spine. So if you're imagining that you're like cutting off urination midstream, sucking lower belly to the spine, those are good ways of engaging those muscles. And the next time that you come to neutral, you'll stay here. Beautiful. All right. So hands are going to be spread wide on the mat. If you had a ball, you can place it between your knees. If you don't have a ball, you'll imagine that you have one placed between your knees. We're good with using our imagination. So squeeze into the ball between your knees, whether it's imaginary or real, um, from the top of the legs. So you should feel engagement around the hips and inner thighs. Are you feeling that engagement? Yes, I am. Okay, good. So as you squeeze in, squeeze on the exhale and then inhale to release. And as you release, you're just releasing the squeeze on the ball. You're not letting your spine start to sag or belly start to sag. And then if you want more of a challenge, we're going to press into the tops of the feet on our next exhale and draw the knees to hover just about an inch above the mat. So inhale to lengthen through the spine, widen the shoulders, and on the exhale, co-contract, gently squeeze into the ball from the top of the legs, press into the tops of the feet to allow the knees to hover just an inch or so above the floor. And we'll hold here for five, four, three, two, one, and gently lower the knees back to the floor. We'll do that two more times, inhaling to lengthen the spine, widen the shoulders. Think about breathing into the back of the rib cage. On your exhale, co-contract, squeeze into the ball, and press into the soles, or excuse me, the tops of the feet to allow the knees to hover. For five, four, three, two, one. Gently bring the knees to the floor. We've got one more here. You can always come into, um, child's pose or a restful position if this feels like it's too much. On your next exhale, co-contract, squeeze into the ball, and then press into the tops of the feet as you hover the knees above the mat, just an inch or so. Five, four, three, two, one. Keep the belly lifted as you draw the knees back to your mat, and then press back into child's pose. You're welcome to take your knees as wide as your mat for a wide-legged child's pose or keep your legs in parallel. Reaching your arms up towards the top of your mat. You can also bring your arms by your sides. Allow the forehead to rest on the mat. And we'll just stay here for a couple breaths, continuing to send the sits bones towards the heels. And you might take your palms and face them up towards the sky to get a little bit more of a stretch through the back of the shoulders. And take one more breath here. 
And then on your next exhale, engage your lower abs and pelvic floor to draw yourself out of child's pose. And we're gonna come into sideline position. So for sideline position, I will be doing two exercises. It'll be lateral leg circles and clamshells. So we'll start. I like to do clamshells with my arm extended long. And then um, we're gonna take our knees forward so that you have length through the lower spine. Hips are stacked. Make sure you're long through the side body, both top side body and bottom side body so that the hips are stacked, meaning that the pelvis is in a neutral position and not hiked up, especially on that top side. So lengthening here, and then we'll externally rotate from the top of the legs. Feet are flexed, draw the heels in towards each other, really press the back of the heels into each other. This is going to be our starting position. Throughout the exercise, you wanna make sure that your gaze is straight forward in front of you and the front of your pelvis, the bony landmarks, ASIS. So right here, right here, imagine there, there are headlights on the front of them and they need to shine straight in front of you as well. So don't let your pelvis move as we do this. Draw the belly towards the spine to help keep the pelvis stable. And then you'll open the leg, drawing the knee up towards the ceiling, and then bring it back down to hover about an inch above the bottom leg. And we'll continue here, either with your hand on your hip, or you can have your hand resting on the ground in front of you. Or put it wherever it's comfortable for you. Just make sure you're not in your neck or your shoulder. We'll do five more on this side for five, four, three, two, last one, and then reach both legs long, flex your feet. Can you see my feet in your view? Yes. Okay, perfect. Just wanted to make sure. So from here, lengthen through the side body by reaching through the heels. And then for lateral uh, leg circles, you can take your back leg, because we're going to be working the lower leg, and either place the foot right behind you or right in front of you, depending upon which is more comfortable for you. I tend to like it actually behind me, but for some people, it rotates their entire pelvis back. So it might make more sense to have it in front of you. So you really want to still keep that headlight position. Yes, you still want to keep the headlight position. So headlight shining straight in front of you. Okay. Are you able to maintain that headlight position? I, I think so. Yeah, better than this because I roll. Yes, I agree. So often if you place the foot in front of you, you'll start to roll the pelvis forward. So yeah. Yeah, for me as well, I like having my foot behind me. It's done both ways. Right. Um, but make sure that you're able to externally rotate the leg enough so that you can keep your headlight shining in front of you. Right. Your bottom leg is going to start lifted about an inch off of the floor, and you'll make little tiny circles. And when I say tiny, they're like as small as you can possibly make them. Continue to reach through the heel as you make the circles. And the circles coming from the hip? Yes, the circle is coming from the hip. Thank you for asking that. Circles are coming from the top of the leg in the hip joint. Change the direction of your circles. And I find as my leg starts to fatigue, my neck wants to help out. So I kind of keep playing with where my arm is to make sure that I'm not getting into my upper body trying to work my lower body. Right. Can you feel where we're trying to work the muscles that are working right now, Marie? I'm sorry, say again? Can you feel which muscles we're targeting in this exercise? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to name the muscles. I'm just wondering if you're feeling it anywhere in particular in your body. I would say maybe I'm not doing it right because I'm not feeling anything specific. So I think what I need to do is focus more on, on co-contracting. Wait a minute, let me get myself lined up here. And when I'm watching you, I'm looking at your foot and your foot looks a little sickled. See, yes, that's it, good. 
Okay. Keep that flex in the foot, reach through the heel without allowing the foot to kind of reshape itself to one side or the other. Okay. And then you're making little tiny circles here from the top of the hip. How I'm, does that feel? I'm guessing I'm supposed to feel it in my inner thigh. <laughs> yes, yes, you're supposed to feel it in your inner thigh. <laughs> not so you're not feeling it there. Not really, not like it's a strain or anything. So let's try something else. Okay. If you're not feeling anything with the lateral leg circles, see how it feels. And usually I would do this um, lying down, but you can also do it from this position. See how it feels just to lift. And don't allow your leg to come all the way back down to the floor. Start a few inches above the floor and then lift small, tiny lifts here and lower. Now I'll my head, leg come I, down that far. My headlights are a little off center, but that's okay. Um, yeah. Either I am. Uh, it's not. I don't notice a big strain. Okay. Um, however, with that being said. I, that's not a strong area of my, and now I'm beginning to feel it. <laughs> it does take a few repetitions to really feel this in the inner thigh or the adductors. Yes. So these are the leg, or these are the muscles that are responsible for drawing the leg in towards midline, which is exactly what we're doing by just doing these little leg raises. Yeah, now I'm feeling it. Okay. <laughs> and I would say just looking at you that you're actually, um, bring your leg a little lower than you need to. So if you look at my leg, I'm reaching long through the heel. Do you see how much of my leg is actually off the ground to start? Yeah. And then I'm raising about maybe three inches and coming back down and raising three inches and coming back down again. So am I going too high or not high enough? I think you're going high enough. I think you're just coming back down too low. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now you're staying engaged through the whole movement. <laughs> Your face says it all. You're totally engaged through the whole exercise now, yes? Yeah. Yes. And now you're feeling exactly what we're trying to work. Yes, absolutely. Boy, what a difference. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm glad you can feel the difference. So I'm still watching that foot. So I don't, can you see what's going on with my foot here? Yes. You see this versus that? Yeah, am I supposed to be flexed or pointed? You're supposed to be flexed, but when you flex, sometimes your foot wants to start to sickle. Yeah, I know. I Yeah. You know. <laughs> so I'm just encouraging you and reminding you to check in every once in a while. You want to keep your gaze in front of you, but every once in a while, kind of peek down and make sure that your second toe is in line with your knee versus yes, wonky. Gotcha. Oh my and, God. And you know, just because we've checked in with our alignment for all different parts of the body. Let's right. switch to the other side and we'll do our um, clamshells first and then we'll go into, we'll do the lateral leg raises instead of the circles. And I'm sure on this side, once you kind of find the proper alignment, you'll feel it quicker in yeah. that adductor area. Okay, so we'll start with our clamshells first. And when we do clamshells, we want to think about an imaginary wall behind us. So draw back of the head, back of the shoulders, back of the base of the ribs, pelvis all against that imaginary wall. Knees come forward to create long spine, particularly long lower spine. And then we're going to spiral the heels together by externally rotating from the top of the leg. Squeeze the back of the heels together and we're balancing on that bottom foot, just the last three toes, because both feet are, or both legs starting from the top of the hips are in external rotation. And then lengthen through the side body. And then from here we'll open, and I actually don't feel them quite lined up properly. There we go. And then opening and closing the leg. And again, there shouldn't feel like there's ever really a rest in this exercise, which is why I instruct folks just to hover the top leg over the bottom leg. If you need a break in between, then clearly take it. Right. And then relaxing, particularly in the upper body on the top, neck and shoulder in particular. We'll do four more here. 
there's actually a lot of moving parts to all of these. And when you're focusing on getting one part right, sometimes the other areas are not doing or are aligned properly. I totally agree. There's so much to think about. And I yeah. think we did more than four just because we were focusing on all those many parts. Yeah. Let's reach long through the legs. And I'm gonna scoop up just a little bit on my mat here. All right, so reaching long through the legs and then take the back leg so the knee is bent, sole the foot's on the floor. We're gonna try to keep our headlights forward as much as we can. And then we're going to raise the leg. We're gonna start about three inches above the mat, hovering here, and then lifting and lowering, lifting and lowering. So if you feel that you're able to get into the adductors more by doing the leg raise versus the circles, then you'll just do the leg raises. If you wanna try the circles, you'll start the same starting position. So the you know most of the lower leg, knee about three inches above the floor, foot's three inches above the floor, and then little circles there as you continue to reach through the heel, and then change the direction of your circles, or just stick with the lateral leg raises, wherever you feel like your adductors, inner thighs are doing more work. Now, again, I'm having trouble feeling that engagement let me watch you and see if I can help you get more engaged. So from my view, it looks like your leg is also a little forward of your pelvis. Does that make sense? Yeah. See if you can reach more through the heel, sending the heel to the wall in front of the foot. Not necessarily behind you, just reaching it longer. And then see if you can rotate the pelvis a little bit more towards me so that the hips are stacked more, which I know is a hard thing to do when your legs behind you. And then what I notice when you do the circles is the leg drops down towards the mat more, whereas when you were doing the lateral leg raises, you didn't allow the leg to come quite as far down to the mat. Now I'm feeling it. So it's when you lift the leg a little bit more that you feel it more, right? Yes, and not letting it, because when I let it drop, it relaxes. It exactly. <laughs> when you let it drop, it relaxes, because that muscle group, the adductors, their job is to pull the leg towards midline. So when you're lying on, the, on your side and the leg flops back down to the ground, they get to rest. Yeah, okay, yeah. And then, exactly. have you switched directions yet? Um, now I am. Okay, no, and I didn't cue you too, so don't worry. I just wanted to make sure that you got to go in both directions. And there are so many things to think about, even remembering to go in both directions sometimes. We right. forget what we just did. So we're now focused on what we're doing right now in the present moment. You're doing a nice job. I can see you checking in, making sure, okay, I've got to keep my foot flexed without letting it sickle. I just saw you correct yourself, and now your second toe's in line with your knee, which is great. Yeah. Good job. Go ahead and rest. <sighs> Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's nice work. work. Do you want to do um, two more kneeling, uh, kneeling lunge and yogi squat? Sure. You didn't know I was going to throw the yogi squat out there, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do kneeling lunge and then we'll see how it goes. Okay. Okay. All right. So I have my blocks because. I like to use them for kneeling lunge just for the start. And then I also really like them if we add in the hamstring stretch, which just fits so naturally with it. So I'm gonna move them out of the way just because I feel like you can see me better without the blocks. But just know that if you have blocks at home and you wanna use them, we would start about here. Okay. All right, so front foot, second toes in line with the knee. Knee is over the ankle. We don't wanna bring the knee forward of the ankle because it puts more a strain on the knee joint. I just finished teaching the knees workshop. The last thing our knees need are any more strain on them. Yeah. All right. The back knee is intentionally behind the pelvis. That way we're getting a stretch through this uh, left hip. And we're going to think about squeezing the adductors, those inner thighs that we were just working, make sure they're still involved. So we're using those um, adductors on both legs to keep the pelvis square in front of us and keep our headlights shining straight forward. Okay. And then I'm curling my pelvis underneath me in order 
to allow more of an opening through the front of my left hip. So it's whatever knee is behind the pelvis, that's the hip that you're stretching on that same side. Right. Oh, cramp. Cramp? Yes. Where did you get a cramp? Right back here. Okay, your hamstring. Yes. So often that, I mean, right now you're working also on a lot of stabilization too, not just the stretch to the front of the hip. Did your cramp go away? For, for now. So part of what your hamstrings are trying to do right now is help you stay stable. If you have blocks that you can use or you know, chair on either side of you or something like that that you can put some of your weight into, it'll help keep you in this position. So right. just a thought. We'll gently come out of the stretch. And if you wanna do the hamstring stretch, it's gonna stretch the hamstring on the opposite leg. You're gonna flex your foot and draw the foot forward in front of you. Okay. And as you do so, think about sending your sit bones back behind you. This is definitely my, this is my compromised hamstring. Yeah. Like and then you can also use your blocks as well. And since I have them here, I'm going to. So as you send the heel forward, you're thinking about drawing the toes back towards the shin. Sit bones draw back behind you. And you're trying to keep your spine long so that you're not rounding your spine. And then same thing with your adductors. Adductors are activated to keep the pelvis in neutral. And I shouldn't really say neutral. It's really keeping your headlights going straight down your yoga mat versus off to the sides of the road. And then gently come out of this stretch because for most people, this is a pretty intense hamstring stretch. Okay. Switch to the other side. Okay. So front knee is over the ankle in line with the second toe again. Both sits bones are reaching back behind you so that you're not hiking the hip up. Adductors or inner thighs are engaged to help keep the pelvis, or front of the pelvis, headlights shining down your yoga mat. And then from here, you're gonna come off of your blocks or press into the blocks if you have them. Otherwise, hands on hips is generally probably the easiest uh, place to be with your hands. And think about curling or scooping the pelvis so you're drawing pubic bone up towards your belly button to get more length through the back of the spine and open up more through the front of the right hip. Do you feel a stretch through the front of your hip? Yes. Definitely. Oh, yes? Yeah. Good. And the further you have your back knee behind the pelvis, the more of a stretch you'll feel. But you don't want to put your knee so far back behind you that you start arching your lower back or sending your rib cage forward. So like most of what we do, it's all about finding a balance. Right, right. Yeah, I think I was a little too arched. Oops. Ramp. And then just like all of these kind of multifaceted stretches and exercises, we wanna scan the body and check in with alignment. So I noticed at one point my knee started to wanna to veer off to away from midline or laterally. So I have to use my adductors a little bit more to keep my knee tracking with my second toe. Right. And for me, I also like to hike my left hip up. So I have to think about sending my sit bones down to the ground and a little bit behind me to keep that hip down. So just some things that might also ring true for you. And then when you're ready, you'll stretch the hamstrings by sending the heel forward, drawing toes back towards the shins, sending sit bones back behind you, lengthening through the spine, and keeping the pelvis in a relatively neutral position. So often with this one, people will start to allow the back uh, hip to roll back behind them. Right. So that's why you want to use your adductors to keep your pelvic headlights shining down your yoga mat. Right. And then we'll take one more breath here and gently come out of that stretch.
Okay. Are you feeling like doing something like um, Malasana or Yogi Squat is available in your body right now, or do you want to wait for another time? You know, I can do it, but I usually put something a little under my heels to help. So um, one thing that you can do that you already have is your yoga mat. You can roll up your yoga mat and place that under your heels to help you. So usually when I demonstrate this, I'll roll maybe like the first third of it. We can roll the whole thing up if you'd like. Maybe I will just a part of half of it. Okay. Yeah. So that's helpful. Um, I'm going to demonstrate real quickly that some people will also hold on to their mat as they're going into Malasana in order to have something to prevent them from feeling like they're going to fall backwards. So you could always turn around on your mat. So I make this look so graceful. But I take my feet out as wide as my sticky mat. And as I bend down, I really want to think about my knees being in line with my second toes. So some people will do this with their feet in parallel, which is awesome. I don't because I haven't figured out a way of doing that yet. But what's important is that whether your feet are in parallel or externally rotated out, coming from the top of the leg, that the knees in line with the second toe so that your knees aren't going one way, ankles and feet going the other. Right. And if you want, you can hold on to your mat so that you can take your gaze up, allow the tailbone to descend down towards the earth so that you're not sticking your butt up behind you, right? So you're keeping it nice and low and dropped. If you don't need the mat, then you're better off clasping your hands or pressing your palms together, bringing in the heart center and using your elbows against the inside of the legs to get a little bit more external rotation. And you can feel a little bit more work also the back of the arms as you press the palms together. Right. And then in gaze straight in front of you versus down at the ground. We'll take a moment to honor the fact that many people around the world do this all day long. <laughs> oh my God. And so many people in our culture find this so, so challenging. And we've had to work our way to get this far, right? Yes. <laughs> all right. And then gently coming out of it. The way that I often will tell people to come out of it, especially if they feel like this is a huge stretch, is to place their hands down in front of them and slowly bend their knees and then take your feet to parallel. And it's a nice opportunity also to stretch through the back of the hamstrings and just allow your neck and head to relax. I like to kind of nod from side to side. And then from here, I'll either come up to a standing position or I'll bring my knees down and go into whatever we're doing next. Beautiful. Nice job. <laughs> good job keeping the balance. <laughs> nice work. That was good. That was really good. I love your references.